Shopify grows your business no matter how far or big you grow. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Whether you're selling your fans' next favorite shirt or an exclusive piece of podcast merch, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash income, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash income now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. When you cross the finish line of a big goal race, the time on the clock and the data on your watch can help you rate and review your performance. That's why so many of us love running. It's so simple to objectively track and measure your progress. But what about after the race? How can you tell if you're recovering well? Are you really ready both mentally and physically to start training again? Sure, there are some high-tech ways that you can analyze your sleep, your heart rate, heart rate variability, and more to give you something tangible to go on. But I would argue that relying on your watch or your ring or an app on your phone is going to be limited at best. Because it's more than your body that's been through the experience of training and racing. Your mind, your relationships, and perhaps even your identity itself have been affected as well and need recovery. No app or GPS watch is going to be able to quantify those things in hard data. Welcome to The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik, and my mission is to help you improve your running, your mindset, and your life with science-backed training and plant-based nutrition. Today, I'm going to get into the three critical weeks of recovery after your big goal race. I'll go over the do's and don'ts in the three weeks after race day, how to properly structure your return to running, and how a great recovery can improve your next cycle and maybe even the rest of your life. Before I get into the details, I want to take a moment to highlight my PR team. The PR team is a small group of runners, just like you, who are working with me and each other to stay consistent, stay accountable, and work towards becoming better runners every day. Not to mention, it's really fun. I'll talk more about the team later on in the episode, but if you are ready to learn more right now, head to theplantedrunner.com slash group. And at the end of today's show, right after the Mental Strength Minute, I'll announce this month's winner of our Apple Podcast Review Contest. Anyone can win just by leaving a five-star review of the show. I'll choose one random winner to win a free signed copy of my book every month this year. If you've just finished a big goal race, or if you are just about to, you might not want to even think about what's next. Or if you're like most runners, you've already got the next race on the calendar. While there is nothing wrong with planning ahead, be sure that you're also planning your recovery properly. Because when done correctly, this time can not only be restorative to your body and mind, but it can help set you up perfectly to take your fitness to the next level. The most important consideration after a big race, whether it's a marathon or a 5K, is recovery. Studies have shown that it takes around three weeks to properly recover from a marathon. A handy rule of thumb is that you need one day of recovery for every mile raced, so that means you need about 13 days after a half and three days after a 5K. 
Of course, rules of thumb are oversimplifications that don't apply to every individual, but it is a great place to start. I'll be mainly talking about the marathon today, but the same principles apply to other distances as well. Day one after a marathon, you should expect to be very sore, especially if you raced hard or if this was your very first marathon. Going up and down stairs is gonna feel like scaling Mount Everest, but try to get out for at least a little walking. Every day you should start to feel a little bit better and you can add in a little more walking and moving. If you have access to a hot tub or a warm bath, this can be incredibly helpful on your damaged muscles. The water pressure and the heat help circulate your blood, bringing in oxygen and nutrients to help repair and rebuild. Not only that, being submerged in warm water is great for relaxation and overall mood. Some people will use an ice bath or a cold plunge on sore muscles. New science is telling us that cold exposure actually slows muscle repair. I personally hate the cold, so I was certainly happy to learn that. The day after the race is a perfect time to sit down and debrief while the memories are still fresh. Be sure to log as many details as you can about what went right and what went wrong because this information can help you craft your training for next time. You'll want to write about how you prepared, what the weather was like, and how well you stuck to your plan. You can include details about logistics and travel and what you would do differently next time. What about your motivation for this race? Was it sky high or kind of lackluster? There's no judgment of your answers, so be as objective and honest as you can. After all, there really are no bad or good races. Each one adds to your experience at racing and taking time to reflect on what went right and where you can improve is a critical step in doing better for the next one. As a coach, I recommend that my athletes take seven days completely off running after the marathon. That might seem a bit extreme to some people, but it's not just your legs that need a break. It's your mind. You've just spent the last 12 to 16 weeks training hard for your race. It's not just the 26.2 miles in your legs, but all the weeks and weeks of training that you've done. Your mind has been preparing and dreaming and planning for this one day. And not running for a week can help you decompress and get back into things in your life outside of running. This is especially important if you were starting to feel like training was a grind or if your race experience wasn't positive. Taking this time off can help bring a fresh perspective and maybe make you even miss running again. And no, not running for one week will not hurt your hard-earned fitness. Rest is how you repair and ultimately grow stronger. Now, when I say rest, I don't mean become a one with your couch and glue the TV remote to your hand. You certainly do deserve to binge watch and seriously relax during your rest week, but you should also aim to be lightly active throughout each day. Once you've gotten through the first week after your race, you can try heading out for a short, easy jog. I'll go over weeks two and three after your race right after this. I want to tell you about a unique opportunity for you to get stronger, faster, and stay motivated to hit all your running and nutrition goals this year, and that is to join the PR team. I started it last fall, and I have to tell you, it's even better than I imagined. Each member of the team gets a custom training plan made by me for you based on your unique fitness, goals, and lifestyle. Everything you need to crush your running dreams is included, such as strength training, recovery, and even cross training if you want it. I include weekly mental strength training as well as tips and nutrition guides. But here's where it gets really cool. The group has its own page in the app where we share workouts, ask training questions, and get feedback from me and the other teammates. And each week I create an exclusive 
private podcast just for the team based on the questions I get and what I see in their training each week. And I usually end up sharing behind the scenes and exclusive sneak peeks with the team that I don't share anywhere else. So instead of joining a Facebook group or sitting through another Zoom call, you get to listen to tailored advice on the run and you don't have to do all of this alone. So if you are ready to take your running to the next level and join an amazing team of runners, head to theplantedrunner.com slash group and join us today. It's more affordable than you think, and I can't wait to have you. Sports stars. They're like superheroes. But they're actually real. Which is why we've made a podcast about them. You see, They've all got a story. But too many of these stories were cut short. Kobe Bryant. Payne Stewart. Flo jo, Phil Hughes. Justin Fashionew. We're writing episodes about all of them. And sadly, many more. Death of a Sports Star. A new series from Crowd Network. After a week of no running, you will likely be itching to lace up and get out the door. The key is remembering that even if you feel great with zero soreness, you are not recovered. Soreness is actually a poor indicator of muscle damage or repair. So don't simply rely on how your body feels those first few runs. Every system in your body was highly taxed in your race and getting back to your usual running schedule too quickly will not allow proper repair. Your lungs, your muscles, your kidneys, and even your immune system have been put through an incredible stressful event, no matter if you ran, walked it, or you crushed your PR. Your level of soreness will not alert you when everything is back to 100%, so you've just gotta trust the recovery process. During the second and third weeks after your race, you can start to get back to the same frequency of runs as you had during the week before your race. Some people like to call this a reverse taper, but I'm not really a fan of that phrase. Your recovery week should be way easier than the taper weeks preceding the race. Now is the time to slowly build back with short, easy runs. I would be careful with adding speed during these two weeks. In fact, I recommend that you just avoid speed completely. The reason is that speed sessions are designed to break you down. You're simply prolonging your recovery time if you try to rush this process. You might not feel or see the effects of improper recovery right away, but not respecting the process is the quickest way to injury, burnout, and performance plateaus. This is also the reason I want you to avoid strength training for at least 10 days after your race, and then only add in light sessions after that. Stretching, mobility, and balance work can be done during these post-race weeks, as long as they're gentle and restorative. The three weeks after your race can also be a challenging time mentally and emotionally for many runners. If you had a great race, you'll be thrilled and maybe tempted to quickly get back to building up your fitness even higher. Or if you had a rough race day, you might be beating yourself up for mistakes you made and searching frantically for your redemption race. Or maybe you're somewhere in between and you're ready to just take the next couple months off. While signing up for your next race can be a good thing to get on the calendar, my advice is to use this time to reflect on how running fits into the rest of your life. Marathon training requires prioritizing training over other things in your life, so take a look around. What have you been missing during those long training months? Have you skipped out on pancakes with the kids on weekend mornings because you were running long? Does your super supportive spouse need some much deserved support from you for a while? If your partner was your biggest cheerleader during your marathon training, it's time for some payback. Running is not your priority for the next three weeks. So think about how you can use this time to treat your support team. Or perhaps your family was a little less than supportive. There's gonna be a certain point in your running journey where your family gets a little tired of all this running you're doing. 
And now is a perfect time to reconnect. What about your friends? How many Friday night get-togethers have you skipped because you needed good sleep for your run the next day? Even if you weren't spending all your free time running, maintaining friendships seems to be a little harder as adults. This recovery period can be a great excuse to just pick up the phone. What about your other hobbies? Has running taken them away? My point is that we are more than just runners. We are multi-dimensional humans with room for lots of things we love in our lives. But when we're focused on something so intense like marathon training, we need to be a little unbalanced with other things in our lives to do it really well. That is perfectly fine and in my opinion, totally worth it. When we have a chance to step back a bit, like you need to in order to recover fully after a major race, it can be wonderful to reconnect with the other things in our lives that give it such rich meaning. After three weeks of rest and recovery, your body should be ready to enter a new phase and begin building again. Now, does that mean I've given you the green light to immediately jump back into a 12 to 16 week marathon cycle? No unless you don't wanna get better at the marathon. If you do that, you are pretty much constantly training and recovering from a marathon, which does not allow enough time to actually get faster at it. Most running experts say two marathons a year is ideal for long-term improvement. That means you'll have a good chunk of time in between cycles. So should you take time off, build up some base miles, focus on speed or something else? For guidelines on that, check out episode 15 of the Planted Runner podcast that came out in January. It's all about how to plan an entire year of running so you're recovering well and racing at your full potential. And now it's time for the Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. Today's topic is the power of sound. When you listen to music or a podcast like this one, it can subconsciously alter the way you run. Fast, upbeat music can inspire you to run faster, whether you mean to or not, while podcasts or audiobooks can help you slow down the pace as you think about the conversation. No matter what you listen to, it can also be a powerful distraction technique, lowering your perception of effort and even making the run more enjoyable. But not listening to anything while you run has its benefits as well. Headphone free runners find that they have the auditory space to better clear their heads, work out problems, or even be more creative. So choose your sounds or lack of them wisely, depending on what you want to get out of the run. And don't be afraid to mix it up to get all of the benefits. This month's winner of my book, The Planted Runner, Running Your Best with Plant-Based Nutrition is Boone Runner. Love the show, five stars. Recently found your podcast after hearing you speak on another running podcast. Being a plant-based runner myself, I really connected with your podcast episodes and I can't wait to listen to more and I would love to read your book too. Well, Boone Runner, now you can read the book for free. Your mission is to email me at claire at theplantedrunner.com with your U.S. mailing address and your signed copy will be on its way. Thank you for listening to The Planted Runner or watching it on YouTube. Don't forget that you can win a copy of my book for leaving an Apple podcast review. So be sure to write yours right after your run today. Reviews are the number one way to boost this show's reach. And it's a great way to tell me what you'd like to hear because I read every single one. Have a great run today. Women's Running Stories, where we explore the intersection between running and life. Because every woman who is committed to a running journey has a story to tell, and this is where you'll find those stories. 
I am host and producer Sheree Louise Turner. I'm a 53-year-old runner, and together with original music by musician and runner Cormac O'Regan, we bring these inspirational stories to life. Please join us to fuel your adventures.